the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, October 4, 2011. I am Abigail McIntyre. Coming up, Redjet soon to begin service to Grenada. Cultural policy consultations begin on Thursday. And GUT increases loan amount in its Christmas promotion. Details of these and other stories after the break. <music> Want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. My book. I did it. I did it. Come and look at what I've done. I read a book when someone wrote it long ago for me to read. How did he know that this was the book I'd take from the shelf, lie on the floor, and read by myself? I really read it, just like that, word for word, from first to last. Cause this book's gonna be a good book. Cause this book's gonna be a good book. Welcome back. The low-cost air carrier Redjet is about to begin service to Grenada. An application by Redjet to fly the Grenada route has been approved by government. The government's decision, taken at a cabinet meeting on Monday, follows on the recommendation of the Grenada Airlift Committee and the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, which both held discussions with Redjet officials. Tourism Minister David, in announcing government's decision on Tuesday, said Redjet's presence will provide a major boost for Grenada. Grenada's economy. Visitor arrivals to Grenada and the rest of the Caribbean have been affected by the global recession. Minister David says increasing the availability of regional air service by bringing in Redjet is a sure way to regain some lost ground. We get more details from Betty and Lazarus. Aviation Peter David says the approval of the application from Redjet is a clear indication of government's commitment to improving this country's airlift capacity. Following a series of consultations with the Grenada Airlift Committee and the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, Redjet now has the green light to fly the Grenada skies. Redjet has announced that as of December 1, 2011, it will operate three weekly return flights from Grenada and Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. Minister David says Redjet's inclusion will certainly revive the downturn in regional visitor arrivals. He adds that the inclusion does not mean that government no longer has interest in the survival of Liat. We believe that the addition of all airlines to our uh, 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 fleet of, of, of airlines that fly to Grenada is good for our tourism industry. One of the major areas for tourism in Grenada is regional tourism. We have extremely good airlift from Europe. We have British Airways, we have Virgin Atlantic, we have Monarch Airlines, we have excellent airlift out of the United States and Canada, Air Canada, Delta Airlines, American Airlines, and Caribbean Airlines. And in the Caribbean, we have also a uh, very good airlift. We have LIAT, we have uh, ACAL itself also, apart from the United States, and now we have Redjet. We have approved the Redjet application on the basis that they are uh, adequately uh, stocked and Mr. Charles will address that issue to fly, but also from the tourism standpoint on the basis that we believe that more 
travel in the region is very good for our economy. We saw a decline over the last few years in regional tourism. Uh, we've lost over 20,000 visits because of the cost of regional travel. It is extremely expensive at the moment to fly in the region. And I know there are those who would argue between Red Jet and Liat, you know, Red Jet over Liat. We are not of that view. We believe that Red Jet can fly and Liat can also fly. Of course, I have always held the position that Liat must be treated must be treated in, in, in some cases as a public utility for the region. We need LIAT, but at the same time, we need to ensure that there is more uh, available flights to the region, and particularly more uh, affordable flights in the region. With Redjet now on board, the tourism minister promises that every effort will be made to increase regional promotion among the islands. Well, if you looked at last carnival, we did uh, had a very strong effort to improve the travel between particularly Trinidad and Grenada for several reasons. Grenada and Trinidad were very close, both geographically and, and historically, been very close. Many Grenadians live in Trinidad. But more importantly, the Trinidad economy is doing well uh, comparatively, and uh, Grenada is a very safe destination for many of them. So we have mar we marketed heavily in Trinidad prior to the carnival, and you're well aware of the improved uh, travel between Grenada and Trinidad during that carnival season. We were up in that in that market. So yes, we will continue to market heavily in Trinidad. Uh, not only for the carnival season, but throughout the year, because we believe Trinidad is a good market. Similarly, Barbados is an excellent market, not only for Grenadians coming back, but as you correctly stated, to have regional tourism. Many persons now, because of the decline in their own economies, are going closer to home to, for their holidays. And we hope for Barbadians, for Trinidadians, for Antiguans and Vincentians and all of that, we can market heavily in these islands and have more regional tourism. Of course, while we continuing to market in Europe, North America, and other territories, we hope that, that we, within the region, with increased marketing, we can see a return to the high levels of regional tourism that we had in the past. The regional service is expected to make 150 more seats available to Caribbean travelers. Senior Civil Aviation Officer in the Ministry of Tourism, Earl Charles, says consideration for approval was handled through the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority based in Antigua. That authority, he explains, has the responsibility to ensure that all security and safety regulations are met by airlines desirous of flying in the Eastern Caribbean. The Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority has given the all clear with regard to RedJet, and that is important. Following that, the Air Transport Licensing Board, this is a local board now, would look at the um, air transport requirements, the competition that exists on the route that is applied for, and things of that nature. And we have determined, the Air, Tra the air Transport Licensing Board, that Red Jet will be a welcome addition to air transportation in the region. So basically, that's where we are, as Minister indicated. Redjet has indicated that they intend to start operation from the 1st of December. Once um, all is clear on their side, it's up to them. We are ready for them to start on the 1st of December. So let us uh, hope that, that in, in fact, that starting date is being um, adhered to. But that responsibility is the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation uh, uh, authority. They are the ones who have to monitor and ensure the safety, airworthiness, um, insurance, um, validity, and things like that. So they would, they would have that under control. Betty and Lazarus, Public Relations Officer, Ministry of Tourism and Foreign Affairs. Two government ministers are putting measures in place to make the working environment at St. Andrew Revenue and Post Office more conducive to production. Social Development Minister Sylvester Qualis and Patrick Simmons, the parliamentary representative for St. Andrew Southeast, both paid a visit to the nation to the station recently following numerous complaints by public assistance recipients. We get details to this story from Leslie and Johnson. 
close to 1,200 people in the parish of St. Andrew benefit from the monthly public assistance program, each receiving $200. But collecting the money at the end of every month is proving to be taxing for the recipients who have to undergo less than ideal conditions. Minister Simmons and Minister Qualis paid a visit to the station on Thursday last to get a first-hand look at the situation. Social Development Minister Sylvester Qualis told the Government Information Service they will look at suggestions with the management team to see how they can improve the delivery system in the Revenue Office. These include increasing the number of workers handling cash at the office. We got a number of suggestions as how to better the situation inside. One, it is very hot. So one of the recommendations is to reactivate the, the, the condition, the air condition, and two, and uh, to the put in some fans. We also look at the the introduction of the reintroduction of the numbering system, which will um, mitigate against young people um, collecting before the older ones. But if you have a number, you know, make the process a little make the process a little easier for um, persons. And then they also they also suggested that the alphabetical um, the alphabetical system where you go by surnames and so on. Um, we also got a suggestion that um, look at if we could do it by constituency, say like on on Wednesday, Southeast, Thursday, Southwest, you know that that kind of system. We also got the suggestion that. Um, if certain persons are, if people have um, bank accounts, if they can be deposited on their bank account, we also look at um, certain persons, a number of persons coming on various days, and different days, and also the also this suggestion came up that we look at um, increasing the number of workers that is um, handling the cash and um, dispensing it to 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 the uh, the persons that come to receive their money. Minister Simmons, meanwhile, is convinced they must do something to deal with the situation. He says there are still some challenges in their efforts to implement the public assistance program. So I guess now it's up to Minister Qualis to make some recommendations to the cabinet so that we'll be able to treat with the, the older folks here in a more humane way. Because that, 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 that's the best word I think we can use to, 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 to explain or to define exactly how we should treat with them in a more humane way. So I'm looking forward to some changes that should occur in the very near future that will make um, the implementation and the distribution of the um, public assistance for persons within the St. Andrews area much more friendlier and accommodating. That report there from Leslie and Johnson. Thank you. Consultations on the national cultural policy will begin at this Thursday, October 6, in the parish of St. David. Minister with Responsibility for Culture, Senator Arley Gill, says he hopes to gather as much public opinion and input during the process that is expected to finish next year. Details in this report. 7 p.m. at the St. David Catholic Secondary School, officials from the Ministry of Culture will meet with the people of the area to get their feedback and suggestions on the draft cultural policy. The final consultation will be held on January 6 next year. Culture Minister Senator Ali Gill says they want to include all aspects of culture, like fashion, theater, dance, song, and even herbal medicine, to be represented in the policy. We want to look at culture and how it affects the media. You know, um, everybody talk about um, foreign invasion and what we see on cable television these days. Um, is it something we want to consider in terms of local content on our radio and television? That is something we want to address. Culture and religion. Um, culture and the, the cultural economy. How can we um, develop our cultural industry so that we have more talpries? We'll have more persons um, practicing their, um, their culture and making a living out of it. You know, people do culture still as a hobby in terms of the, in terms of the art form. How do we um, get as much Grenadians as possible to um, appreciate that what they do and where their talent lies is, is not just a hobby, but they can make a sustainable livelihood out of it. Um, those are some of the you know, critical issues that we will want um, coming out of, of the consultative process. 
Government received funding to the tune of 42,000 U.S. dollars from UNESCO earlier this year to carry out the process and complete the document. The policy will form the basis that will determine how the country treats cultural matters in going forward. Minister Gill says the input of each Grenadian from all strata of society must be represented in the policy. There is um, rich cultural traditions um, you know, in, 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 in our maritime space and the fishermen, our farmers, you know, um, the elderly folks, each and every sector of society um, represents a different aspect of our culture. And of course, we want to get as much persons as possible, regardless of race, regardless of class, regardless of age, regardless of religion, um, to make an input as to uh, what they think a cultural policy in Grenada um, should entail. The culture minister says since assuming office, government has begun a process of revolutionizing Grenada's culture and the policy is the glue that will keep it all together. When we develop the two new festivals, the Spice World Festival, the Common Folk Festival, those are the sort of initiatives that when you do your research, you will see countries like Jamaica as well as develop those things. So that what we have done over the past three years is a, is a systematic program of cultural development. I like to refer to the cultural revolution in, in, in the sense that I think that we have completely revolutionized what we've met. And the cultural policy now is coming to provide us with more fuel for us to continue to develop on what we have started. And the call is for those who are interested um, the call is for persons who believe that they have a contribution to make. Now is an excellent opportunity to make the contribution. I mean, it's all well and good to, you know, call a radio station and say anything you feel like and so on. But now is an excellent opportunity for your constructive um, contribution with regards to how we can develop the cultural policy. A copy of the draft cultural policy can be found on government's website gov.gd where people can read and leave comments. You're watching the GIS News Hour. More after the break. message from the Supervisor of Elections Parliamentary Elections Office on registration offices and office locations throughout the tri island State. For the constituency of Karikou and P.T. Martinique, Registration Officer Dominic McFarlane, office located Kim's Building, Church Street, next to Hills and Valleys Pharmacy. St. Andrew Southeast, Sherry and Belfon in the Agricultural Office, Seaton James Street, Grenville. St. Andrew Southwest, Dennis Perrot, Grambra, next to the Community Center. St. Andrew Northeast, Percival Burke, Mr. Henry Davis Building, Junction of Paradise and Coco Road, St. Andrew. St. Andrew Northwest, Leslie and James, Annex, next to Mr. Mitchell Shop, Maribel. St. David, Vincent Moraine, the former NCB Building, Pitti Esperance, St. David's. Town of St. George, Sharon Duncan, GOT Credit Union Building, First Floor, Grenville Street. St. George Northeast, Wilford Jones, Decoats Building Complex, Mount Gay, and Dr. Alexis Building, The Green St. Pauls. St. George Northwest, Kevin Francis, two-story building on the Happy Hill Main Road between the Shadina Road and the Ice Cream Parlor. St. George's Southeast, Ronald Simon, Marion Community Center. St. George South, Royal Charles, The Lime, Scranance, first building on the right. St. John, Anthony Gentle, downstairs Mr. Carlton's Frederick Residence, Langton Road, St. John. St. Mark, Samuel Britton, downstairs Mr. Marnell Streaker's Building, Diamond Street, Victoria. St. Patrick East, Leaf and Henry, IDC Building, Sertes. And St. Patrick West, Ian James, IDC Building, Sertes. It's a message from the Supervisor of Election, Parliamentary Elections Office.
Welcome back. Telecommunications provider Lime will be placing heavy focus on its service to customers this week. The company is one of many local businesses that are observing October 2nd to 7th as Customer Service Week as declared by the Grenada Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Activities are being held under the theme Refresh, Recharge and Reconnect. General Manager of Lime Angus Steel says his company is passionate about providing exceptional service to its customers. For us in Lime, it's, it's very important. Um, we continue to look at our service generally um, to our customers every single day, uh, seeking ways we can improve. Um, we know we get complaints about not being able to reach us. We know we get complaints about the length of time it takes to resolve issues. And it's always work in progress. And one of the things that um, I'm confident about is that we would always get better. And this week, we are going to use a week to celebrate in various ways some of the things we've been doing, um, some of the things we continue to prove up, improve upon, and of course in doing our part as a good corporate citizen in making that contribution towards saying that we want to improve, we want to get better, we want to serve customers in the entire nation better. And so this week is exciting and we certainly look forward to it. Officials from Lyme will be making appearances on various radio and television shows during the week. Their first stop was at the GIS Spice Morning on Tuesday. Retail service manager Delon Oliver spoke of some other activities down for the week. Our managers will take the opportunity um, to spend our time, and more time with our customers. So throughout our retail outlets, um, we will, customers can get the opportunity to chat directly. With our, with our managers. We also want to spend some time with our corporate customers, visiting our corporate customers, again, from the manager's perspective. Um, so it's, it's a lot of interaction with our customers, not just from the front line, um, staff that they have an opportunity to, to meet and greet every day and, and, to, and to be served by, but also from, from a manager's perspective. Um, and we will come in later with the week with, um, you know, a little uh, appreciation day on, on Friday by giving back to our customers and a small, you know, small refreshment on Friday um, throughout our retail outlets. So. The Grenada Union of Teachers has increased its loan amount to members in its Christmas promotion. The promotion was launched on Tuesday where Representative Ms. Elsa Batiste said the promotion will help the credit union to assess the needs of its members. When the campaign was introduced last year, the credit union offered $15,000 as its promotion package. We are looking at persons who are interested in renovating their homes, persons who are interested in carrying out other works that they probably could not have done during the year and they're waiting to beautify their homes for Christmas. Also persons who are looking at getting new furniture or just they would have recently built their house and they're looking for some furniture. We are looking at giving them that money, making money available so that they can do that, just to make themselves happy for Christmas. Even though we understand times are hard, we are looking at giving $20,000 at a reasonable rate and easy, easy access to persons. We are targeting our members, our persons who would have recently joined, they would have been in the credit union for the past six months, they would have access to this loan product. We are also looking at persons who probably have the Christmas loan from last year and they are looking to just top it up. They too have access to this $20,000. The promotion runs until December 30th. In regional news, former Barbados Minister of Tourism Noah Lynch has called for a single airline to serve the region. Speaking during a recent seminar on air travel in the Caribbean, challenges and opportunities, Lynch argued that a single Caribbean airline owned and operated by regional interests was the best option for CARICOM. He said air transport has an integral role to play in the development of the integration movement and added that one Caribbean airline that leverages the resources and and expertise in most of our countries coupled with a combination of successful homegrown policies is still the best model for air transport success in this region. 
Trinidad and Tobago's opposition leader, Dr. Keith Rowley, has renewed his call for the immediate end to the state of emergency, which he said was serving no useless purpose. He said the state of emergency, as a response to fighting criminal activity in TNT, has outlived any potential usefulness. Rowley added that the government was preserving and maintaining an unnecessary state of emergency so as to have a political advantage on TNT. According to him, the government can not justify why they need to have regulations that curtail other normal democratic activity. You're watching the GIS News Hour. Sports is next with Trevor Threats. Stay with us. can own a state-of-the-art BlackBerry phone in the NLA's BlackBerry Mania promotion. Spend as little as $4 in the lotto game and be in with a chance to win as much as 8 BlackBerry phones with free credit and one month's free data. Condiments line for living every day and as much as $100 in free phone credit every week for 4 weeks. Week. Compliments NLA making your dreams come true. Just write your name, address, and phone number on the back of your non-winning lotto tickets worth $4 and place them in the NLA branded box at any of our lottery partners island wide or in carrier coup or pity martini the more you enter the more chances you have to win blackberry phones with free credit and free data for one month and phone credit worth 100 dollars weekly lotto blackberry mania runs from sunday september 18th to saturday october 15th 2k11 draws for phone and phone credit will be conducted every wednesday from september 28th see press for more details lotto play and win a lot homegrown jackpots yes. must be 18 or older to Participate in LA supporting sports, culture, and nation building. As a responsible mother, I would not be caught off guard for this hurricane season. Mr. Ivan and Miss Emily taught my family and I a serious lesson. Them long lines in the burning hot sun, asking for handouts, not me again, not me again. So I am shopping very early for the supplies my family needs for this active season. Join with me and do the same. Positive results when they return World Cup qualifying uh, fixture against Belize and Belopan on Friday. Forming this uh, international soccer star, John Vance, begin a three day clinic here on Wednesday for young footballers. Uh, Hard Rock maintain their unbeaten their lead in the Heineken Soccer Championship, and the table tennis gets a shot in the arm in the sister Isle of Kairiku. This is another GIS Sports Hello Arm, Trevor Thirst reporting. The national soccer team is going on a victory in the return World Cup qualifying picture against Belize in Belmopan on Friday. The team left in high spirits uh, this morning, hoping to avenge the loss suffered against Belize in St. George's a month ago. There was plenty of disappointment as Grenada went down three goals to nil at the national stadium. But coach Nat Simpson says that the team spirit is high and that they are looking to turn the tables on the opposition. I think we have enough to go and do the job. The guys are getting better. They played. What I've done is played some more practice games than before. We played Hard Rock, we played Hurricanes, we, and we have played GBSS the last game on Thursday. The guys scored seven against GBSS. And what is good is this past weekend, uh, some of the players like Clyde and Shane and them, they, these guys scored about 10 goals. Players who are there in that squad have scored about 14 goals over this weekend in the game. So in that area we have been working at, and once they are scoring for the clubs, it means that they're getting the habit. Coach Simpson says that the team for the return fixture is stronger, with several overseas players included. 
Well, I think we'll have mostly basically the guys out of the U.S. in Rocasa, Anthony Augustine played, and he played well in St. Vincent, and um, Ashton Henry. They are going to be there, and um, in the U.K., I think we expect one from the U.K. again. We can't afford the amount of money. It costs a lot of money to bring these guys in, and I have to work within the constraints of the budget of the FA. Coach Simpson says that good things are expected from the team in Belmopan. It's going to start a win. I am very much optimistic that going against Belize, the team we went against them was a young one. This one is a more experienced and a tougher unit, so I would expect good things happening in Belize. National soccer coach Nat Simpson. Grenada will be in action again and next weekend when they host St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the return fixture at the National Stadium after losing the opening encounter in Kingstown two weeks ago, two goals to one. Victories are being sought in the remaining fixtures as the Grenada seeks to build for the future. The team cannot advance, to the, advance further into the competition after losing the two opening games. Well, the football, football news leaders had Rock maintain their lead in the GFA Heineken Soccer Championship with another victory over the weekend. Uh, they beat Ball Dogs four goals to one at the Bush Street playing field to push on to 32 points from 14 matches. Uh, the St. Patrick's outfit uh, certainly played uh, playing certain playing enterprise in football and is hotly favored to win the championship this year. At rivals, though, Lime Paradise kept the pace with the leaders after more success, they went on a goal spree, trouncing Sobsa's 13 goals to nil at the Royal St. John playing field on Saturday. Paradise have won 31 points from 15 matches. There were also wins over the weekend for Queen's Park Rangers, Newham GBSS, and Funkinor United. Queen's Park Rangers beat Hurricanes 2 goals to 1 at the Queen's Park. GBSS topped Shanty Mel 3 goals to nil at the Fur Plain Field in St. Patrick's. And Funknoy United defeated Eagle Super Trikles 2 goals to 1. Former England international soccer star John Bands will be in the country for about a week conducting a football clinic for youngsters. The Digital Clinic, as it's dubbed, would last for three days. It starts Wednesday at Progress Park in St. Andrew and continues Thursday at the Computers Park in Gore and Friday at the Queen's Park in St. George's. Bands will be attempting to furnish the youngsters with the basics of the game. Three of the top players will be selected from the clinics to go to Trinidad Tobago for a regional workshop in Port of Spain to be also conducted by Bands, the former England striker. Netball star Latisha Cato is heartened by the outcome of a summer program she has conducted in the parish of St. Patrick. Scores of youngsters participated in the exercise, which furnished them with the basics of the game. Cato says that the youngsters showed plenty of interest and enthusiasm. She's hopeful that a young, strong team will emerge. Cato, who played for the Celtic Dragons in the English Professional League last year, will be returning there next year on for a second year. Her deadly shooting exploits helped led the Celtic Dragons to fifth their best position in the competition to date. Cato, who leaves for England towards the end of the year, early January, to play in the 2012 season, is hoping to take her team to the top, the summit, on this occasion. Table tennis in the sister isle of Cariku gets a shot in the arm with the staging of a one-week course there. National table tennis champion Jason Stanislaus is conducting the exercise designed to further promote and develop the sport on the sister isle. Diana Isaac says that the schools are very much involved. Physical education teachers in Karku and PT Martinique are being taught the art and skills of table tennis playing by Grenadian coach Jason Stanislaus. Stanislaus is facilitating a workshop in the basics of table tennis. As part of his one-week stay, Stanislaus is also holding tennis sessions with students at Mount Pleasant Government School, Harveyville Government, Dover Government and Leicester Rosary. Jester Emmons, senior coach in the Ministry of Karku and PT Martinique Affairs,
described the tennis training as the start of the reintroduction of different sporting activities on the island. About three years ago, a number of corporate citizens donated seven tennis boards and other accessories of the sport to the people of Karakou and Piti Martinique. Diana Isaac, Public Relations Officer, Ministry of Karakou and Piti Martinique Affairs. Thank you, Diana. Despite the gallant effort, the Trinidad Tobago are packing their bags for home after failing to qualify for the semi-finals of the Nokia Champions League 2020 competition now on in India. The TNT cricketers beat Cape Town Cobras by two runs today after another good performance. They scored 137 for four with the top scores coming from Darren Bravo, 29, Dennis Ramdin, 24, Cooper, 25, and Barrett, 16. Trinidad Tobago then restricted the opposition to 137 for four in another gripping finish to secure victory. Oi Shaw, the English player, scored 63 and Villas hit 54 for the team. It was their fourth win in the competition, but the two losses, the close ones, too, cost them a place in the semi-finals. The win means that the Mumbai Indians are through to the semi-finals. TNT qualification depended on the Super Kings beating New South Wales by a small margin. The Super Kings can also qualify if they win by a good enough margin, while a win for New South Wales puts them through to the last four of the event. Nonetheless, it was really a good and a commendable performance from Trinidad Tobago in that competition, winning four matches and losing two very close ones. Well, the news that's coming to hand is that New South Wales have advanced to the semi-finals of the, uh, by beating Chennai Super Kings by 46 runs. They are advancing to the semi-finals of the Nokia Champions League 2020 competition now on in India. David Warner, the Australian player, scored, uh, played brilliantly, scoring an unbeaten 135 for his team, the highest score to date in the competition, and uh, not only in the competition, but in 2020 cricket. His innings helped New South Wales to a good score of 202 for two in their 20 overs. Stephen Smith contributed 31. Chennai Super Kings could only respond with 156. O'Keefe took three for 28. Finally, the West Indies Cricket Board, the WICB, says that the Super 50 final and semi-finals will be day-nighters and will be carried live by ESPN. The WICB made the announcement today, adding that six matches were played at the Ghana National Stadium, while four will be played at the world-famous Border Cricket Ground. Games will also be contested at the Everest Cricket Ground and the Blair Mount Ground. Officials say that the total of 66 regional 50 over matches have been played at four venues in Guyana, 37 at Border, 17 at the Guyana National Stadium, 8 at Bremont, and 4 at Everest. The highest score at any of the venues is a 364 or make that 367 for 4, made by defending champions, the Liberal Islands, against Canada in 2008, while the lowest is 18, that's right, 18 all out, scored by the West Indies on the 19 team at uh, Belmont in 2007, when the former West Indies fast bowler Pedro Collins uh, destroyed them with a devastating haul of uh, 7 for 11. Yeah, remember that in 2007, 7 for 11, the young uh, our West Indies on 19 team crashing for just 18 all out. The best individual score was 151 scored by Peyton uh, Lambert at border against Guyana. That should be against Barbados. He's playing for Guyana. He did it against Barbados in 1997. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. students of the Grenada Seven-day Adventist Comprehensive School. Do you know what to do before a hurricane? Well, let me share a few tips with you. Check to be certain that your emergency equipment is in good working condition. Store water, food and essential supplies. Obtain and store materials to protect your home. Have enough supplies last at least two weeks. 
review your insurance policy to ensure it provides adequate coverage. And remember, a disaster can happen anytime, anywhere, so be prepared. Hi, I'm Shanta Hafford, a student of the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. Do you know what to do after a hurricane? Let me share with you a few tips. Assist in search and rescue. Seek medical attention for persons injured. Assist in community response efforts. Avoid site C. Clean up debris and effect temporary repairs. Report damage to utilities. Remember, hurricanes are no respecter of persons. Before we go, here's a recap of the stories making it in the headlines. Rajat soon to begin service to Grenada. Cultural policy consultations to begin on Thursday. And GUT increases loan amount in its Christmas promotion. On behalf of the entire team here at the Government Information Service, I am Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for joining us. Watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.